Okay, does everybody see the chart? Uh, not the chart, the PowerPoint now and hear me? See the arrow? I just put it up. Let me know if you can hear me. I'm the only one that can see everybody here in the room today. If you have questions, you can just type down here. I'll see your questions. If you have any questions about what we're talking about during the presentation today, I'll answer them live. When we're done today, if you want to talk specifically about the market, we can talk about that too. I know that's something a lot of people are interested in. I'm not fully on addressing that today in today's lecture, but I know it's something people find interesting. I've had a cold for the last few weeks. I haven't done a lot of videos on YouTube like I normally do. In fact, I'm due for one. I might do one tonight. <laughs> in fact, I am going to do one tonight. Maybe we'll do the video. Maybe I'll do the video tonight of the market after we do the lecture. Why don't we do that? I'll just do it. You can hear. Okay. Dale, sign out and back in or call Kathy. Here's the phone. I'm going to turn the mic off on and off really quickly. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now, Dale? I just turned it on and off really quick. Okay, now you can hear me. Then you're good. I don't have any charts up. I have the PowerPoint. Does everybody see this? Or do I need to reset this too before we get started here? Dale, can you see the? it's a orangish, goldish? All right, hold on. Let me reset this. Is that good? I have it up, Dale. If I, if you don't see the presentation, you might have to uh, log out and log back in. It just flashed and now it's gone. Quick, try to call Kathy. She's around. She's really good with getting uh, answering the phone and getting back to people. I'm taping it as well. If you miss the first minute or two here, if you call Kathy, then I'm taping it. So don't worry. Okay, wonderful. Looks like we have a good group here today. Thank you for coming. For those of you here that know me, my name is Melissa Arma. I own a company called The Stock Swish. For those of you that don't know, know me, I've been trading for two years. Uh, or I've had the business for two years under the name of The Stock Swish. And I started out the business at the end of 2012 because I had a strategy that worked really well in the market that my friends encouraged me to teach people. I started trading, day trading at the end of 2008. So I've been trading for six years. I've been teaching people what I know for two. It's going to be longer than two years here, actually, into 2015. So when I, when I started out trading, I figured out this method that I'm going to talk about today. I never, 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 never dreamed I'd be teaching people. And I had a lot of friends that at the time wanted to be traders, too. And then I was like teaching them as I was figuring stuff out. And they said, gosh, this is really good, Melissa. You should, you should start a business and teach people this. Because, of course, they knew that it was really good. And they had taken other classes as well and didn't, didn't learn how to trade. And then I was, I was doing it myself. I was figuring it out. In fact, I'll tell you this really quick before we get started. I had a conversation with a friend I hadn't talked to in a really long time over the weekend. Someone that knew me at the time that I was figuring this stuff out, way before I started the business and way before I was making money, but I was like really into it. And 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 she knew that I was had something here good. Actually, some of you might might know her. I'm not gonna say her name. She uh, used to work for a competitor, another educational firm. She's since moved on, but she said, How did you she actually said it to me, it was so funny. She said, How did you how did you what how did you stick with it? She said, How she was trading, she quit. She said, how did you get up every day and keep doing it? How did, how did you, why did you stick with it? She said, and, and I really, I almost laughed because she was so serious about how did I stick with it? Because of course, at the beginning, when I was figuring this out, I was losing. I mean, everybody that trades at the beginning usually loses unless you, unless you happen to hook up immediately with someone that knows how to trade and you learn instantly, which rarely happens. And I, I said to her, you know, sheer willpower, just sheer willpower is how I stuck with it. I mean, really just total the desire and the drive which I had and still have today to make money in the market and that comes through in my teachings I think to people as well and now obviously I've been doing it for a long time successfully alone but at the time this lady this friend knew me and I haven't talked to her for a long time you know 
I was not profitable. And she's since reached out to me again and wants to get back into trading. I think once you have the, the desire to train the market and make money, it kind of really almost never leaves you. Unless something drastically changes in your life, you, if you have that desire, that little bug that tells you that there's something to this thing, you, you do find your own path. Some people it takes a long time. Some people it doesn't take as long. If you have that bug, you're going to stick with it. You will stick with it. The sheer desire, the drive to do it, you will find your path. And I'm grateful that I figured out how to do it and did stick with it. So let's get started today. Today we're going to talk about the topic which is earning fast profits in 30 minutes using one strategy. It's the way that I trade. It's the method that I trade. It's what I do. As I said, I started a business two years ago. It's called The Stock Swoosh. You can go to my website. I'm working on expanding that site. It's very basic now. The brand new site should be up and running by the end of the year. If you have questions about classes directly though, you can always call and email me. You can email me at melissaatthestockswoosh.com and I have a lot of videos on YouTube of trades that I've done and other webinars I've done as well. And you can follow me on Twitter and Facebook too as well. Now, how can you make fast profits in the market? You've got to have a method. You've got to have a way. What do I mean by my fast? I mean taking trades that are on an intraday chart, on the one-minute chart, or the two-minute chart, a very, very small time frame, a very specific time frame that you're trading. How can you do this? You can do this in gaps. This is the strategy we're going to talk about today. Now, there are many, many people out there that talk about gaps. Before I get into deep, deep detail here, I just want to show you this gap. This is a gap on Sprint that happened back here at the beginning of November. The stock closed up here the night before around approximately 625. It gapped down here the next day around 540-ish, under 550. Okay, so this is a gap. Now, if you don't know what a gap is, I'm just quickly, quickly going to tell you. A stock or the market gaps when the close of the price of the close of business at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, which is when the stock market closes, closes at one price one day and opens at a different price the next day. That's what a gap is. For those of you that don't know, some of you do, that are here, that's all that it is. Now, the difference between the close and open could be anything. It could be small, it could be large, it could be pennies, it could be a dollar or more. It doesn't have any set amount. <clears throat> okay? It varies. But that's basically what a gap is. So this is a gap. And this is something that you can play to trade to make money very quickly in the market. And it's a strategy. There is a lot of money in the stock market. It's the draw. It's the desire. It's the thing that set me on this in the first place. The reason I wanted to trade and always do it because I did mortgages for a very long time. And approximately around 2007, 2008, when I decided I needed to find another career, I was looking for another career. I was searching, and then it came to me about the trading, that I wanted to find a job that I could do, a source of income that I could have, quit my mortgage job and, and, and make money that was something that I could have the potential to make a lot of money. Because I was doing very well doing mortgages, but then the whole mortgage industry, the banking industry really collapsed in 2007, 2008. Many of you know that with the whole uh, industry collapse with the banking industry. It's not that banks don't do mortgages anymore, but it's very different now. And I did well for a lot of years, and I wanted to get out. So I was looking for something where I could make a lot of money. The stock market is one of those places. If you know how to trade, you can make a lot of money and do very well. And not only that, you can do it for your whole life. What I know now, I know now, and I will always know, and no one will take that away from me. And it's the same thing with the people that I'm teaching. There are people that go through periods in their trading, and maybe some of you are in here now, where you might do well for like a month. Or you might do well for like two months. Or you might be on a streak where you're doing well for maybe like four, five, six months. But then something happens and then what you're doing doesn't work anymore. Like the thing that you were doing was temporary. Like it was not something that was really, really consistently good and strong enough to withstand the power of the market to last for you to consistently make money for the rest of your life or as long as you want to trade. It's a lot of people go through that. That part of their life that they go through when they're doing well in that piece keeps them in the game. But then a lot of times what happens is people don't get off of what they're doing that really didn't work or have any longevity in it. 
Maybe they didn't even have a strategy at all. They were just doing one thing that worked for a period of time or trading one stock that worked for a period of time. And then they keep doing that thing and they keep doing it and they get back all the money they made in that period that they were making it for a couple of months or something, maybe even a year. But then it doesn't work anymore and they won't get off of it. And now they're actually down from the money that they made and then they're struggling to figure something out. The only way to really, really make a lot of money in the market, no matter how you do it, day trading, swing trading, core trading, investing, is to find something that will always work, meaning for a long time, that you could actually rely on this. I was looking for something reliable because I wanted to quit my mortgage job. So you've got to have the reliability in the strategy, which we're going to talk about. It's really about relying on yourself and no one else. When you get to a point where you want to rely on yourself, it's a point of realization that your life is your own creation. And I firmly believe this because I've done it. And when I had the conversation with my friend the other day, it was so interesting because this person knew me at a different time in my life and I hadn't talked to her for a long time. And it's, it's, it's amazing because a lot of people don't believe that people can create their own dreams and make them happen. And I'm living proof that you can. You are the one in charge of your own life, you and only you. And when you start to acknowledge your own personal power and your ability for personal growth and to learn something new and make more money, you will be amazed at how things can come together and how much your life can change for the better. Because it can. Sometimes it's just about opening up our eyes and seeing the possibilities for our own life and for what we want to make of it. Imagine the possibilities for your life if you learn how to trade for serious profits. Now, serious profits could mean what? It could mean $10,000 a month, approximately $2,500 a week, something like that, where you're making a good income, a hundred grand a year or more. For some people, that's not enough. They need to make $20,000 a month, 200 grand a year. It depends where you live. It depends your expenses. It depends where you are on the planet. You know, I think that you have to have in your mind what your goal is. Why are you doing this? Are you doing this for just extra money, just to go on a vacation, just to have a little extra money around, a little extra savings? Are you serious, serious about doing this and you really want to change careers like I did and it's something that you really want to be able to make a living doing. You have to know, though, what your goal is, the reason you're doing it, so you have that commitment there if it's really there for you. How can you get to the point where you are financially independent? What do I mean? I mean where you don't actually have an employer, where you don't have to worry about going into a job every day, waiting for that person to give you a raise or a bonus or the possibility of being fired, or the possibility of the entire industry that you're doing, like I did when I was doing mortgages collapsing, which had nothing to do with me, nothing to do with my ability, nothing to do with even the company that I worked for. It was just the circumstances, the environment that the whole uh, economic system was in at the time, not just in the United States, but really in other countries as well. You've got to get to the point where you're financially independent if you really want to feel that personal power like you're in charge of your own life, you're in charge of the decisions that you make, you're in charge of the fact that you can make this much money and have the potential to make even more. Where do you see yourself in a year? We're getting into the close of 2014. I think this is a great time for people to start to evaluate what they've accomplished this year. Now the year isn't over. You still have approximately two more months left in the year or thereabouts, but it's time to take a look and see. Did you trade well this year if you traded? Did you not trade at all this year but thought about doing it and never move forward? Where do you want to be in a year from now, at the end of 2015, do you want to be in a different place? Or are you actually happy at the place that you're at? And if you are, congratulations, that's good. There's nothing wrong. If you're happy with where you're at right now, you've achieved all you've wanted to this year, good job. A lot of people, though, what happens is they get into a groove with their trading or something that they're doing that's not working, and all of a sudden, poof! You know, here it is, it's the holidays, and they didn't realize how much time they might have wasted on doing something that didn't work giving it a chance, giving it a chance, giving it a chance. You have to kind of step back and see, am I going to be at the same place in a year from now if I keep doing this thing? Or, or do I want to be somewhere else? And then on top of that, look at where you see yourself in five years. I think this is a good idea as well. This is a long range plan. I'm not saying right now, this second, or in a couple of months or in a year. I'm saying long range plan in five years from now, what do you want to be doing? Do you want to be trading the market full time as a day trader? Do you want to have quit your job right now if you're doing something else? Do you want to be going to work in a trading desk for someone? Do you want to have moved to a different location? Maybe you're living someplace right now you don't even like where you're living, the city you're in, and you want to make more money so you can move out. Go someplace else in the world, on the planet. You don't like where you're even living now. You need money to do it. 
Training is so great because of the fact that you all you need is a computer. All you need is a computer and the internet connection, and you have to learn how to train and to be able to do it. But you could literally be anywhere in the world and do it. And if you're in a place where you don't like the city or town or the state that you live in, or even the country, and you want to go someplace else, you, that may be your long-term plan. You might want to retire and move to this place in five years. How are you going to get there? Okay. The world is moving at a faster and faster rate. What does that mean? That means the people that are not ready to step up to the plate and be able to make decisions for themselves and have conviction in their choices are going to get left behind. Like I just said, it's just, you know, I can't even believe that it's almost the end of 2014. I cannot believe it. It's amazing to me. I, I've been in my apartment now for almost a year. I can't even believe it. I feel like I almost just got situated and got everything perfect where I'm living. And now here it is. It's the end of the year, and it's the holidays already. The world is moving at a faster and faster rate. We have to keep up with that, or opportunity is going to pass us by, and then things will happen, as they always do, that you're going to have to uh, make choices about stuff. And then you're going to be like, why didn't I do that then when I wanted to do it when I had the time? Why didn't I do it then? Okay, so you have to keep this in mind. The lack of ability to be able to make choices to move forward is going to hinder you for where you want to go because the world is moving at a faster pace. This isn't just the market. This is the world that we live in is moving at a faster rate. I'm sure some of you know exactly what I'm talking about because it is so, so true. This is not a bad thing. This is actually a good thing. Movement means change, progress, Okay, these are positive things. I don't want you to look at this as a negative. I want you to look at this as a positive. Movement, progress, change, flux, fluctuations, all of this is good for you to get where you ultimately want to be to achieve your goals. Okay, now you got to look at the bigger picture, but you need to know what that is. I don't know what that is. Early retirement. Just having your afternoons free where you're not doing something that takes up all day or having to work so many hours, you have to know. You really need a plan of action in place. And not only that, a time frame for doing it that is concrete. It's so interesting. I talked to a lot of different traders who want to trade the market. Many of them have absolutely no time frame for when they want to accomplish their goals. They just don't. It, you get to a point, if you have a fixed amount of money to trade the market and, and, and a certain amount of time that you have each day to do it, when you're you going to get to the point where you say, my goal is to do this, to make this much by this time, to do this, to get the strategy down, to learn it, to make this right. You really need to have some kind of time frame. Many, people spend years doing something. Some people spend years trading on demos. That boggles my mind. Never even trading live money, real money. It, obviously, that doesn't work. Okay, you have to have a time frame for doing it. I mean, really, really doing it. That's concrete that you say to yourself, this is my goal. Otherwise, you never get there. The eventual goal, never you never reach it. You don't even have a goal in a time frame. You're never going to get there. Now, we're going to talk about gap trading. I showed you the one gap earlier. We're going to talk more about this. But the reason that I like gap trading as a strategy and the reason that I do it is because it makes sense. If you think about this intellectually, it's a picture of your brain here. It just makes sense. This is one of the reasons why I chose to trade gaps. Why does it make sense? Now, we're going to talk about this here when we're done today, but I did clip here the QQQs. Well, let's talk about it right now. <laughs> I forgot I put this in here. This is a chart of the QQQs ETFs in the market. I watch the market and the QQQs and the SPIs every day. A lot of people watch the market. I don't necessarily play the market as a day trade, but I am very wary of what the market's doing here, and I often do videos on YouTube to see the directional bias. The market's in an uptrend. I clipped this here only since really March of this year, but the market is in an uptrend. It is in a very strong uptrend, and it is going to continue in, into an uptrend and continue to move higher. Many people have been looking at this market. Actually, people were talking about this back in here. Uh, before we rallied and made a new high, that the market was going to collapse. People are still showing that now, by the way, because they think the market's extended and that the market's going to fall off a planet. We're going to have some big, big crash that's going to fall off a planet. I'm not calling the market that way. In fact, I'm calling the market the same as I've been this whole year and even last year, which is that it's bullish and it's going to continue to be bullish, at least for now, and really, I think, into 2015. The reason that I'm saying that is because of the gaps. Now, I showed you the gaps in, this, in the S pattern. Let's look at some gaps here in the market. This is a bullish gap. 
that happened back here. This was in October. So the QQQs closed here around 94 something and they gapped up. This is a bullish gap and it opened up here at 95 something, opened and rallied. This is a gap up here too. It doesn't look like much because it actually went red on the day, but the fact is the market gapped up. It went red on the day. You could not have gone long the market in here intraday as a day trade, but it gapped up overnight. Then guess what? It closed here and it gapped up again the next day and it rallied. Closed here, gapped up again, rallied. This is a neutral gap. It gapped up again. It gapped up again. If I count the number of days in here, the market had so many bullish gaps in here, it's not even funny. Now, how am I reading this as a person that understands gap trading as a day trader? I'm reading this market higher. I'm reading the quality of the gap, seeing that they're very bullish, and I have a way to qualify them that they're going to hold bullishly. And I'm also reading that the market's not extended because there's new money coming into these gaps. When something closes at a certain price, I'm just making up an example here now, and opens at a different price, what makes that happen? On the purchase side, if a something gaps up, what makes that happen is buying. Now, if something gaps down, say a stock closes here and gaps down a dollar, how, what makes that happen? Well, there's two things that can make a down gap, selling or shorting, but either way, you have the selling mostly in down gaps. Sometimes you have the shorting that makes it, but it's usually selling for the downs. So the only thing that can make a gap up here in the market is buying. What is happening here in the market in here is new buying. That's why this is market is higher. So gap trading makes sense because you're reading what is making the gap. Now, that being said, it doesn't mean that every gap that sets up that's bullish is a long, and it doesn't mean that every gap that gaps down is a short, okay? There's actually almost every stock in the market and the market itself gaps almost every day. Really, if you want to be that precise, but you can't play every single one, and you can't play every single one in the direction of the gap, okay? You have to find what I call the good ones if you're looking to day trade or even swing trade for longer term trades to profit to make sure that they're going to do what, that they're going to hold. I call it like stick, okay, that they're going to hold, that there's a weightiness to them, that there's enough weight of the money in the gap itself, whether up or down, that it will hold and stick for a move that's going to pay you intraday for the day trading or for a move that could last a couple of days if it's a swing trade. The good thing about gaps, though, for the day trading, which is what I do, is it's yours very quickly in the market when it happens in the morning because stocks have momentum into the open between 9.30 and 10 a.m. And the reason that they have momentum between 9.30 and 10 into the open is because people are figuring out what they're doing with these positions in the stocks before the market opens, which I'm doing as well, by the way. But the people that are making the gaps are figuring out what they want to do before 9.30. And then they have the orders all set up to go in and hit in and take hold into 930. So gaps are a really good strategy for making a career transition and your time is limited because you're just playing that first hour. Sometimes you get a setup between 930 and 10 and you're out. Sometimes a setup happens between 945 and 10 and you might be in it till 1015, 10, 1030 10, ish. You're really not in trades at all in the afternoon unless for some reason something's working and just continuing to fall if you're in a short or rally if you're in a long. You're really looking to get out within 30 minutes in the trade quickly, quickly, quickly. Most of the momentum and 80% of the move really happens in the morning in gaps. The other reason that gaps are nice to trade is because it allows you more time for yourself if you just trade that morning period. Now, you might have another job to go to. You haven't made the transition yet. And if you don't and you're like me, you have freedom to do stuff in the afternoons. Go to the gym. I like to go work out. Sometimes I do in the morning. Sometimes I wait till I'm done with the trading and I go in the afternoon. You have a lot of personal freedom. Now is a good time of the year to actually enjoy that as well because it's the holidays. And I live in New York City and there's so many fun things to do right now in New York and the holidays. I could walk around the city every day and see something new in New York City right now and just enjoy my afternoons and not even work. So there's a lot of personal freedom that comes with being able to profit and make your money in the morning and having the rest of the day to yourself. Trading gaps also has unlimited income potential for your future dreams. I talked about this. I'm talking about, again, future five years out. Where do you want to be? Your bigger house, different property, different city, different state. Maybe you are planning to have children. You're planning to get married. Maybe you're engaged. Something for your future. You, this can get you there if you learn how to do it well. So what is your plan of action and how do you get there?
this is the method that I developed myself over the period that I traded when I started out in 2008. It's GAPS, and I named my system the Golden Gap. It's a rating system. That's really what it is. It's a 26-point rating system for a gap. The purpose of the system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. So I have a checklist. I go through the checklist every morning. I look for the best gap, the highest rated gap. The point system is 26 points. You don't have to get a perfect score to trade it. You are looking for 20 or more. What does that mean? That means if the gap rates 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, you can look to do the gap in the direction of the gap if it's a long or a short. The philosophy behind the 26 points is you're looking to find stocks to trade that have a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Big moves on the day. Early confirmation of the bias because you want to get the quick trade between 9.30 and 10. And you're looking for precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward, which we're going to talk about in a little bit here too. So this is all that I do. I do the same thing every day. I don't do anything else. I don't trade any other strategy. The strategy is gaps. I use the checklist. That's it. That's all that I do. I trade in the morning. I'm done. Every once in a while, I hold something in the afternoon. I only do gaps. You can do longs and shorts. I prefer the shorts. I'm very, very good at shorting. The funny thing is I'm calling this market higher and everyone's saying the market's going to crash. Hey, I'd love the market to crash if it wants to crash because I'm really good at shorting. I'm poised to take advantage of that when, if that ever happens, but it's not setting up that way. So trust me when I say the market's higher, I have, would have more to gain by telling you to short the market, but it's not going to happen, okay? At least not for the foreseeable future. So I short stocks. Someone was asking me the other day, why don't you go long? The market is bullish. Why aren't you going long? Why don't you like to go long? I like to short because there's panic that comes in, okay? There's panic that comes in to stocks. The reason that stocks work in gaps is because large institutions, hedge funds, banks, trading desks, big institutions have positions in stocks. They are typically long. They are typically long stocks. Now, they do take short positions, okay? But they typically are long. Many of them are managing money for people, and people like to go long, and they are managing money on the long side, 401ks, all this stuff, okay? So they're in a lot of long positions. And when they sell out of them in a good bearish gap, there's panic that happens, and they have to get out. That quick, quick, I call it a dump of selling of share size that happens into the open creates momentum for you to short as a trader to get that move when the institution sells out of their longs. So why trade gaps? Why do they work so well and pay so well? Because gaps are created with large institutional money. That is really what makes the gap in the first place. The professional gaps that happen and play out in stocks are formed by one thing and one thing only, large institutional money. It's called power money. It's a name that I made up, but it fits because it is amount of money that is so gigantic that you can't comprehend it. And that is actually what is in the market. Therefore, you need a way that will help you pick the correct direction to play the gap and confirm that the large money will flow with it. By having a formula to rate and qualify the gap, you get confirmation and conviction then that the large institutional money is on your side and you play it. Gaps are an event and create a sense of urgency. And this is why I like shorts. There's a sense of urgency if somebody's up and now they're down. There's no sense of urgency if nobody's in anything long to buy it. Okay, so this is why I like the shorting. Now, I'm not saying you can't do long gaps. You can. You can do the exact same thing in the long. You flip the points. But there is more urgency. You get the faster moves. And the more panic and the bigger moves that happen quickly to the downside. Why? Because an action is being forced by participants of the stock people that are in it. And this is why gap trading is incredibly powerful. Trading gaps is a powerful and profitable way to trade because you're trading on the side of power and you don't need to do anything else. Now, you can do other things if you want to. I have people that have rated my gaps. They've taken the class and then they do options in them instead of doing the day trade. You can do that. There's a timing thing that happens with the options for your trade. I don't do that, though. I only do the equity trades. I'm day trading. You can do the overnights. The leverage is offered, uh, different for the overnights, and we're going to talk about leverage here in a minute as well. A lot of people, for some reason, it's like ugh, trading stocks has gone out of style. I think it's kind of gone out of style, actually, since the whole banking thing. I think between, I think really from, actually, even after the Internet bubble. I think it was even before that, before I was even knew anything about the market. Somewhere between the end of the 90s and then the early two, 2000s, for those of you who have been trading for a very long time, 
longer, you know, than I've even been in school. But, you know, I think it's like not, like became unfashionable to do stocks. People like didn't trust stocks anymore. They just, it was just unfashionable to be a trader and do stocks that much. But the fact is that it's coming back in fashion, okay? I'm part of a new era of this. I'm a young person. I'm training stocks. I love it. It's coming back into fashion. There's other things you can do to trade that are, some of them are very risky, okay? The one good thing about the U.S. stock market is it does have some regulation involved in it and actually protects you as a person that trains in reference to that. You also have the advantage of getting leverage, which we're going to talk about. And so you do have leverage on your money, which you don't need the cash cash for dollar to trade. And that helps you. And if you're a day trader and you're flat every day and out of your positions by 4 o'clock, you're protected. So if something gaps against you overnight, then you don't get hurt in it. And you know every day when you're done how much money you made. Or if you lost in the day, you know at least that's it. It's a fixed amount. The thing about stocks that will always make them be in vogue in reference to the way to really profit for people that understand intellectually what's going on in these stocks is that people have heart and love companies and people and products. And that's always the case. So even though people are saying, well, you know, the market's rigged, it's this, it's that, it's the other thing. The fact is people love Apple. People might love IBM. People might love GMCR. They, they have heart. People have heart for stocks, okay? People don't like have heart for ETFs. People like don't have heart for Forex. Like people love these things. They watch the commercials. They watch the people on TV that are the CEOs. They like this person. They like that person. They have a, they feel like they know the person. They love the products. That allows some of these stocks to have moves because people have heart in them. They feel like they know this company or they know this stock or whatever it happens to be. Okay, That's why it's so great to trade stocks if you understand how to profit because you can take advantage of that. Whether you take advantage of the fact that people are loving something to take advantage to making it money to the upside. Are you taking advantage of the fact that people hate something and then they're selling it and you're taking advantage of something to the short side? You're always looking for the opportunity and what's going on in it. But people, and it's people that are in the market, and even these hedge funds, they have all of these things. I was talking about this in the last webinar, these research reports. The people are, they do these, these companies, they do these research reports and they sell them to each other. And it's a big, big business. But they believe in this company, that there's going to be growth in this company, or this company is going to do this thing. They, they even have heart. Even those Hedge funds, banks, institutions, they have heart for different companies, okay, just like regular people, individuals who like the products. And you don't get that in some other things out there that you try to attempt to trade, okay. So in this industry, longevity and consistency counts, and the reason why gaps work so much is because they're made by institutions. They have a lot of power, and again, there is a force that happens in stocks to trade will always exist as long as companies exist in the U.S. market that you can trade on to play into long or short. So the philosophy behind what I do is really to analyze a large time frame to make the trend decision on the directional bias for the gap. And all large traders of every kind look at large time frames to make decisions, particularly institutional traders, which is why you're trying to look at that. And then the good thing about it is as an individual, you're looking to make entry decisions and exit decisions based on a small time frame, which I do in the one minute chart. I'm going to show you some charts here in a minute. This is a high degree of focus and accuracy because it moves very fast. One minute is 60 seconds. It's actually a long time for me now because I've been doing this so long. But if you're new to the one minute chart, 60 seconds can seem like a blip. If you're used to trading on a 15 minute chart, it's going to seem very fast for you. But it's actually the way to have really, really quality, good risk to reward trades. Using the daily chart to make the decision for the stock pick allows for accuracy in the direction. And using the one minute chart allows for good risk to reward trades with accuracy, which is how you're going to get the, make the money. Because risk to reward means for every dollar you risk, you're making what? If you're only making $1 for every dollar, that's not good risk to reward. If you're making $2 for every $1, that's good. If you're making $3 for every $1, that's really good. If you're making more than three for any dollar that you risk, that's excellent, and you're, you're a profitable trader. Okay, and it covers some of the days where things don't work and you have to take a loss. Now let's look here at this gap here on the S. By the way, this was a good swing trade. Stock continued down, still is lower, by the way, too. On the day trade, if you shorted this in the day, it was a nice short, went past the target, followed through, could have held this overnight. Okay, really nice moving this to the downside. Now, here's where the stock gapped. We're on a one minute here. Now, this is what I do. I'm looking for the gap. 
The stock closed the night before up here at $6 at approximately 20 cents. I see it. It's 4 o'clock. Boom. Then you get up in the morning. It's 9.30. Now, between here and here, you were looking for something to do. You look for the S. You will rate this gap. How are you rating this? You don't know it's going to open here, but you're seeing it's gapping somewhere in here. You can look in your level two, and you see that the stock is actually not at 6.20. You see it's somewhere in here in a range. It probably was moving in here around 5.50 something, whatever it was. I don't remember exactly. You will rate the gap then based on that price, and then you'll wait for the market to open to take it, okay? And you're looking to see if it raised 20 points or more. If it doesn't, you won't do it. If it does, then you will look to do what? You will look to short it because it's a short gap. It's a down gap. What if this doesn't rate 20 points? You won't do anything with it, okay? You just will leave it be. It's what I call a no play. Now, if the gap doesn't rate well, let's say it rates really stinky, like 12 or 13, it doesn't mean you flip it and buy it. You just lay off of it, okay? Because you're looking for the good ones that have a high probability to follow through. You've got to have a strategy that has a high probability of working or you're not going to make money consistently, okay? Anyways, a short in this setup pretty quick. You short it right here. Boom. There it goes. It actually fell off a plan. It went right to the target. You could have gotten all out here. It rallied up. It had a second setup, and it dropped again. Here again, time of the day here. You're looking between 9.30 and 10. It's set up very quickly, and you're out of this within 30 minutes. You could have been out of this before 10 o'clock. If you stayed in it for the second drop in here, which you didn't even need to do, came after a little bit after 10. Now, if you're a beginner, you've never traded in your life, and you want to trade, you can do a small size. If you do this trade, you can risk 60 bucks, $60. That's it. You can risk $60. If you risk $60 in that trade, I just showed you the total profits of $240. It's really, really good. To be able to risk $60 and make $240 is excellent. That means for every dollar you risk, you made four, and you made it in less than 30 minutes. So that's great, okay? If you can make $200 a day, money through Friday, that's $1,000 a week. That's $4,000 a month. That's not almost 50 grand a year or thereabouts. If that is your second income and you only have to, you know, trade for 30 minutes or so in the morning, that's a nice extra second income. You also have the huge potential to be able to turn that into something much, much greater because if you can consistently make $1,000 a week day trading, you'll be able to increase your size to make more. Now, say you wanted to do that. You now are at the point you've been doing this for three months. You're consistently doing it. You want to start risking more. This is called intermediate. Intermediate could be anywhere from 150 to 250, 300. You're risking $300. If the trade would have failed, it did not. But what if it would have? It's the worst thing that can happen to you. You lose 300 bucks. That's it. Okay. You are shorting it. You're taking a short. You're shorting the stock at $5.40. You put in a hard stop. This is a hard, hard stop at $5.50. You're taking 3,000 shares. That sounds like a lot, but the stock price is only five something. So this is very affordable. Exits at the target. It went to the target. It went to the target in the first drop. This is not the second drop. This is before 10 o'clock. You're out. Went to the target. Boom. Total profit, $1,200. Again, four risk units. This is over $1,000 that you just made then in less than 30 minutes. And you risk $300, which is not a sneeze. This is a decent amount of money to risk in a day trade, but very good profit. Went right to the target. Why? Good gap. Nice gap here. It's all about the gap. If you didn't have the gap, you wouldn't do this. You would, I would never trade it. I tell people the entries that I teach in the class cannot be taken on anything that ever trades or sets up. You can't even trend trade and take entries the way I teach. The entries that happen and set up, you are being aggressive on because of the gap. You see the gap, you rate the gap. That tells you that. You get the confirmation then into the open when you get the setup and you take it. No hesitation. A lot of people when they day trade are waiting until after 10 o'clock for the confirmation. By the time 10 o'clock rolls around, the stock has made 75 to 80% of the move or actually might have made all the move and flipped. That happens sometimes in gaps too. And I'm all out or half out or more than half out. If you are waiting until after talk. 10 o'clock for confirmation, you're, you're going to miss the move. How are you going to get paid? You are, you are not going to get the same risk reward, and you're going to miss the boat. The idea is being aggressive if you know what to look for and what to do because you want to get what I was describing earlier. I'm just going to go back to this 
thing in here. You want to get take advantage of this in this gap, which is the panic. Again, I call it a dump. Stock opens, all this happens in here. This is selling. This is what I call concentrated selling action. As soon as the stock opens, it just goes right down. So if you're waiting, 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 waiting. Now, this did have a second setup. The second setup is laying. It's not as big as this one. And if you get this one, you can stay in it down there if you want to. You can take half out of it in here if you want to. You can add back in here if you want to. If you're waiting until after 10 o'clock to do it, you're doing this. Maybe you think it's going to 4, 450. Maybe you don't even get out of it here because you didn't take it up here. And then it trails against you, and then you didn't even get it. Do you see how it closed on the day? Actually closed over 5. Closed over 5. This is the trade. This is the money trade in here that you're taking. And whether you hold it down here to the second move or not or after 10 is up to you. Your own money manager, but it went to the target. You would be all out or most of it anyways. But you see most people wait until after 10. How do you know the confirmation is this, the way the trade action sets up here where I know the setup in the open. I have the gap rating. That's the checklist that I created. It took me three years to figure it out. But that tells me this is going to work as a short in the day. And then I do it with the confirmation of the setup. Otherwise, most people are waiting. They're like, not sure. Is it going to fill the gap? Should I short this? Is it going to fill it? Should I buy it? What should I do? They wait until after 10 to see an intraday trend, or they wait to see what the market's going to do, and then they miss the boat. Okay? Again, what's the worst thing that can happen to you here? You take the stop. And there will be times when you have to understand that you will take a stop, but you want to grab that trade when you can and take it, the opportunity is in the gap. You see that all before the open, and that's when you pounce on it and then take the trade. Now, if you're an advanced person here, you've been doing this a long time, even if you're just doing it for a year with me, <coughs> you could take this kind of size. Every day trading for a year with me, you'd be in a position to be able to take the size. Anything in a $600 risk unit is advanced. You would enter the trade at the exact same place as the newbie. $5.40, stop over $5.50. Can you put a stop in at 6,000 shares of this? Yes, you can. You might have some slippage, but this will hold. This is a very, very heavily traded stock. There's plenty of volume in this. Exits $5. Profit on this is $2,400. Nice, solid move in here. Again, same move that everybody got. First drop out, out at five. Risk to reward is four. Nice trade, good, solid trade. If you get up tomorrow morning, say this is a Monday, and what if you get up on a Tuesday, you have something that doesn't work. You lose one R. Well, you're still up three for the week. What if you get up on Tuesday and there isn't anything good to do at all? You go back to bed. No highly rated gaps. You're still up four for the week. See, this is, you know, this is where you're looking to get this kind of risk to reward so that you can cover yourself for the cost of trading, the commissions, platform freeze, the things you have to pay for. You have to get high quality trades with nice moves in here so that you can pay yourself consistently to achieve your goals. And actually, if your goal is $2,500 a week, you just made it in one trade. So you would be very, very careful the rest of the week. Or you could actually not trade the rest of the week. Now, I wouldn't do that because I like to look every day for something good. But, you know, if this is your goal for the week and you have a weekly trading plan, once you're up over $2,000, you stop, you could do that. If you make the one trade on a Monday, you're done. Okay. Now, what if you did, this is an advanced concept, but I'm going to go over this because I do this. I'll go back to the chart and show you. You take the original trade. You take the original trade 540. You do the ad of the second setup. This is kind of late to take it into an ad. Could have gone down to 475, 450. Anyways, you take more, you double your position. You don't get out of any into five. You actually add to the position. <coughs> okay. Now you have 12,000 shares of this. Your original position was six, you add six. You've cost averaged yourself in, it's above where your stop is. So your cost average is 527, stops at 525, your risk is nothing. If this trade fails, you didn't lose any money, but if it fails, you didn't make any either. You stay in it to the drop of the next reversal time, does not go to 475, gets close. You exit at 490, now you made actually way more than 2400. You made over $4,000. The risk reward is terrific in this. Okay, really, really good because you actually didn't risk anything by the time you did the ad. Uh, okay, we have a question here from Morton. Sterling is the one that I use for actual entry order system. Orbis is what I use to make my chart decisions. Why? I like the charts. So I actually have two. Now, I'm not saying you have to have two. Some people have two. Uh, what's that one that people use all the time? Oh, I can't 
can't think of it. There's something that people use all the time that they like. I forget what it's called now. I'm just having a blank here. I've never used it. Um, where they use because they like the charts, but then they use something else for the entry order system. And you can use whatever you want as long as it has charts to see the actual pre-market data, daily chart, one minute chart, and you also need a level two to be able to take the entry order position and put in hard stops. That's it, Ninja Trader. Yeah, I forgot. I've never used that. People love that thing though. So I, you know, use whatever you like. You have to know how to use whatever you use. Uh, DOS is another good one too. eSignal is a good one too. I mean, there are good platforms out there that have pretty, pretty charts. You've got to be able to see what you're doing. Uh, you also have to have fast execution. So if you're on something that has beautiful charts and you press the button and you can't take the trade quickly, well, that isn't going to work either. So I found a happy medium. I, I got to have two things going on for myself. But, you know, this is just because I've been doing this for a long time and then I've gotten into a thing where I just get, I've gotten used to one platform. For those of you that have been training for a long time, it's hard to change when you have something. You know how to use it. It's hard to change then. Sometimes you have to. You know, I've made it all work for myself. If you can find one that does everything, great. Uh, how long does it typically take to do assessment on a stock? Well, now, I mean, I've been doing this for a long time. Six years is a long time to do one strategy alone, but I can do it myself in less than five minutes. If you are brand, brand new, it may take you eight minutes. It still should be less than 10. It's not like it takes you a long time. You're not rating every gap that happens. You are picking a group, maybe three or four or five or six that you like in the morning, and you are rating those, and you are determining if they're good. And in earnings season, you do have a lot, and we're in earnings season now. Now, in the in-between times and in-between earnings season, you may not have as many. You might only have one. You might only have two. I do it pretty quickly, but I don't do it quickly just to be quick. I really, really, actually, I take my time. Actually, to be honest with you, I could do it really, really fast. I could do it like, but I take my time because I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I want to make sure, like, I really have conviction. I want to make sure I'm seeing it. I want to make sure that I like the thing, that I really, really want to do it. And so I, I could do it faster, but I take my time. So I think for people that are brand, brand new, it might take you a little bit longer than five minutes, but it still is not going to take you a long time. Well, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying to go through the rating system. I'm saying to go through the whole shebang. Here, let's go back to the S. <laughs> I, it might only take you five minutes. I'm, I'm trying to be conservative here because I, 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 I don't know what people really know. I, 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 it's so interesting. I come across so many different people. I, I come across so many different people. I don't know what, if, what people really know how to read charts when I meet them. I can't tell that when I talk on the phone with you. And I won't know that until you take the class and start to trade and ask me questions. If you know how to read charts and you take the class with me and you just grab it and get it and take hold of it, it's not going to take you that long to rate the gap. But if you really are not good at reading charts at all, Mr. Pengar, um, it might take you between five and eight minutes to go through it till you get good at it. But it's practice makes perfect kind of thing. It's like riding a bike. The more that you do it, the better that you get, the faster you're going to see things. It's about your eye. It's a, I have a good eye, okay? You are training your eye. This is the benefit, actually, of learning from me, whether it's taking the class and trading on your own or taking the class and then signing up to trade with me every day in the live room. You are, you are training your eye to look like my eye because I have a very good eye. Like... I can look at that market right now. I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to tell you this right now. I can look at the market right now and tell you that that market is going to run up to some crazy number in 2015 that, that's not even on the chart yet. That's how good my eye is. You can call me back in six months or a year and see if I'm right. You just watch my YouTube videos. I, can, I have a great eye to see what something's going to do because of reading gaps. Okay? So the benefit of learning from me as a, as a live trader, okay, is that I have an excellent eye to see something. I can tell weakness and strength, and I can see what it looks like by institutional positioning. I can read institutional positioning in the market. 
I'm telling you that this <coughs> is new buying. That's why the market isn't extended. That's why the market isn't going to collapse. Institutions don't take hold of something with new money and sell right out of it. That doesn't happen. It makes no sense. I have a good eye, and I'm telling you that this is new buying in the market. This is You can go long the market right here if you want to go long the market that could last all of 2015. This, this gap here in the market, this is a gap, this is red. This, is, this gap is not even green. This is a red gap in the market. It is not even green. It is a long that is setting up that could last and hold the entire next year. It's not even green. Okay. This is why you have to learn how to read institutional positioning to make money, especially if you take overnights, especially if you're taking longer term trades, and especially if you want to day trade consistently because if you are doing something that makes money and you're constantly back and forth, then what you're doing doesn't have consistency, and it doesn't have consistency because you're not trading on the side of power, and the only way to make money for the rest of your life in the stock market is if you're trading on the side of institutions. They are not against you. I'll tell you who you're against. You're against other traders. Sorry to tell you. You are against other traders. And when you are buying stocks that gap down or shorting the market like this, you're trading against me, and I know what I'm doing. So you are trading against other traders. That's where you're getting the money. There's always a winner and there's always a loser. Your enemy is not the institutions of the market. They're your friends. You won't get paid without them and you must be with them and you got to learn how to read it. And if you want to make money for the long, long term, then you got to learn how to read institutional positioning and why are gaps a good strategy to trade no matter what you do in the market because gaps are made by institutions and they are an event that happens to the chart, a price event. Not every gap that happens though is significant, but I can read the ones that are. And for you, if you're brand new and never did this before, you use the rating system. And that rating system trains your eye. And it trains your eye and you learn with me to train your eye as well so you can see what really is new buying, what really is selling, what really weakness looks like. And I'm telling you, there's nobody that loves a short more than me. Nobody on the planet that loves a short more than me. I've been shorting for six years in a bullish market and I could be going long and I'm not the market, if it was weak, I would tell you, I would scream. I would, I would tell everyone in the world, and they'd flock to me to short. And that could happen someday if I keep teaching. But the reality is, though, that the market's not going to come in because this isn't really weakness. Nothing that happened back in here was, and it 100% retraced it in less than a week. It 100% retraced that drop off in a week. I don't have a scanner that I use for outside of the platform, if that's what you mean. Lewis is asking me about a scanner. I just have the platform scanner. And that's all I use. So you could buy a scanner if you want to get something really uh, fancy. You could. Or you can just use free places on the internet to find gas. I mean, there's so many things out there that tell you, here, here's one. This is free. This is free. So you could pay for one if you want to. I actually don't pay for a scanner. Now, how many gaps do you get per week? I got off track there a little bit, and we'll talk about the market here at the end. During each quarterly earnings season, you get three to five gaps or more. During non-earnings season, you get three to five quality gaps per week. So there might be some days in non-earnings season you won't take a trade. Again, you don't want to lose. The object is to profit, so you won't do anything. I actually didn't do anything today. I didn't take a trade today. There wasn't anything I liked. There was one gap. I rated 19 points. I didn't do it. It ended up working out. At an 18, 19, has a 50, 50 chance of working or failing, but it's not good enough for me. It's earnings season. We'll have a thousand things to do Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I had a nice trade yesterday. I didn't do anything today. Okay. A quality gap is one that rates high enough to trade based on the 26 point rating system. If it's under 20, you're really not supposed to do it. You're supposed to follow the rules. They're supposed to follow the rules that I teach you in the class. They are strict. It's a trading plan, basically. If you know what a trading plan is, my class is basically a trading plan. You just follow it. How does trading stocks work? You can be anywhere in the world and trade the U.S. stock market. You don't have to be a U.S. citizen to trade the U.S. stock market. You can open up a brokerage account anywhere in the world and trade the U.S. stock market. You have to have access to 
an online training platform with a live level 2 data and charts that allow you to see pre-market data, level 2 data, and candlestick formations like I teach in the class how to read them. But you can be anywhere in the world to do it. You need an account and in a brokerage account that is leveraged and in a brokerage account that would allow you also to short stocks to take advantage of the ability to be able to short because you can make a lot of money on the short side. And for those of you that <coughs> have brokers with stinky short access, you've got to look around and that is a motivation actually where you might make you have to change platforms because you don't want to miss out on actually not even be able to take a trade if you can't get the short. But you can do it anywhere. Now let's talk about leverage. Leverage is used for a small initial investment, credit, or borrowed funds to gain a very high return in relationship to one's investment, to control a much larger investment, or to reduce one's own liability for any loss. Leverage is a great thing. If you didn't have leverage, you need dollar for dollar cost of the stock. It'd be very hard to trade expensive stocks. And actually, the market would not have as many participants. It would be shut off only for the rich because you'd really have to have a huge amount of money to trade. I'd say you'd probably have to have at least $100,000, $200,000 even to trade right if you didn't have leverage. But the fact is that we do have leverage, okay? So how can I use the leverage in my trading account to my advantage? You are going to put stops in, size yourself correctly, know that if the trade doesn't work, you only lose a fixed amount. That's how you're going to protect yourself from losses. And if the trade goes on to work, the leverage that you have will help you make more money to take size in a position that you couldn't take if you needed the actual cost value of the stock. You use something called money management, and you're using stops to determine your entry and risk amount like I talked about in the S. The stop was only $0.10. Cents. That's actually a perfectly normal stop for that stock at that price point. Not too small and not too big, just right. And it worked. And if it hadn't worked, you would have lost what you lost to the stop. People that do not use stops often do not use stops because they're afraid of stops. They don't know how to use stops. I would never trade without stops. I would never have. And I never will unless I get to the point where I myself am an institutional trader and you can't use stops. But the fact is that as long as I'm a day trader, I'll only use stops for day trading. If I do overnight, you don't have stops, but you still have paper stops and I would have to honor those paper stops. You have to have a set amount that you're willing to risk and lose and you have to actually be responsible about that. If you don't put the stop in, it's because you're afraid to put it in because you don't want to lose and you're in fear about the fact that you could lose and you can't be in fear of the fact that you're going to lose. You have to have 100% conviction that what you're doing is going to work and you take the trade and you take the risk and you put in the stop and you have to be okay with the amount of money they're risking. If you're brand new, risk 60 bucks, $50. That's going to be fine if you lose that. It's not going to be the end of the world. You have to learn how to do it. You can't Risk more than you're willing to lose, but you have to be conscious of the fact that something could go against you really quick. And if you don't have a stop in, you could lose big time. The problem is many people don't know where to put the stop. I teach this. Okay. I don't necessarily focus on low price stocks. That's a good question, Robert. I'd say I do gravitate, though, to be perfectly honest with you, in trading stocks between a range of $10 and probably $65. Those, that... That range between $10, $12, $15, dollars and like $65 bucks is like my, that, I live in that range. Now, I'm not saying I never do stocks $100 or more, and I'm not saying I never do things under $10. Will I short a penny stock? No. In fact, we're going to talk about, when we're done here, I can talk about a penny stock thing. But I, I don't have like rules like I won't trade something under $10 or I won't trade something over 65 but I have found that you get the greatest risk reward which is means the size of the stop and the move of the stock because you can get two three four five dollar moves in stocks between ten and sixty five dollars that you know you can take decent size in them and you can you can get paid so you don't have to break the bank kind of thing trading stuff like Amazon or Priceline to make money I know everybody looks at it and say oh I just $150 or something is, you know, it's the risk reward is good in things that are good gaps, no matter what the size of it is. But, you know, you, you can't be risking $60. You can't be risking $600. I mean, some of these stocks you're trading, the stock might be $3, $4. So, you know, you really have to be in a very advanced level for your risk position to take stocks like that, unless you can trade out lots, unless you can trade out lots, actually. Okay, good. Yeah. Robert, if you want a free trial, email me. Here's my email. Robert has to go, and then I'm going to carry on here. If, if, you need, if you need to ask me any questions, you can email me here if you would like a free trial.
Now let's get back to what I was talking about here, leverage. Leverage helps you make money if you know how to trade. Leverage is a good thing. If you know how to trade, all intelligent traders use leverage and use it to their advantage. Why? Because you don't have to put up as much money. Okay? Everybody uses it. Leverage gives you buying power to take a position without needing the full cash value cost of the stock to outright purchase it. I mean, if someone told me I can get away with X, Y, Z amount of money in my account with leverage, I'd do it. I mean, obviously, you know, the you want to put up the least amount you have with the most leverage. Everybody wants to do that. Now, you have to be responsible with the trade you're taking, but the stop in. But leverage is a great thing if you know how to trade. Great thing. For example, to short 6,000 shares, for example, of S, instead of needing 32,400 in real cash at 540 in strike price, the advanced trader only needs a leverage equivalent of position in the buying power. For retail account, this would equate $8,100, okay? And for the beginner and intermediate trader with only 400 to 1,000 shares, obviously it'd be much less. Now, this was a cheapie, but even if you did something like a 20 bucks or something, same difference, it's the very idea that you didn't need 32,000 to take that trade. You only need 8,000, for example, to take that trade. It's a big, big difference, okay? Four to one leverage, huge difference. So obviously, if someone said, well, you can take this trade with only $8,000 in cash, that's a lot better than how you put up $32,000 in cash. So leverage is a good thing and it helps you trade. Now, another thing that helps you make money besides the leverage is the position sizing. The position size you take in a trade depends on the amount of money you choose to risk based on your level. And I broke it down and I, it is broken down. Beginner, intermediate, advanced, and at the beginning, everybody's a beginner. Even if you just, you know, even if you traded for 100 years, I don't care. If you're new to GAPS and new to what I do, you have to start out for a couple of days or a week, at least at a beginner level because you got to get into the groove of it. You can jump up quickly if you're good. You are putting your stop in the trades based on using your required monetary risk amount. Using hard stops means you're only risking that portion of money. You need leverage and buying power to take a position. But it has nothing to do with the amount you're risking on the trade. Nothing. You are deciding on each and every trade you take what your monetary risk is, and it should be similar or roughly the similar in each trade. So you're not taking a $60 risk in one trade, a $300 risk in another trade, a $150 risk in another trade. If you're a beginner trader, your risk could be between 50 and 60, 50 and 70, 40 and 50. You, and every trade you take is the same. It can't be varied. This is another thing that people, people are used to trading lot sizes. If any of you are doing that now, that's not the right thing to do. You can't take 1,000 shares in everything you do. What if you take 1,000 shares of something, it's a dollar stop, you risk $1,000 and you only want to risk 200. No, you can't do that. You have to take less. Trading lot sizes doesn't work. My, my position size varies, and it can, it can have a big range sometimes, okay, because sometimes I am trading stocks, 45, 50, 60 some dollars, and the stops are larger, okay, you just never know. In fact, the one last week, I don't remember exactly what it was, the, the A&F, that wasn't a small stop, actually it was a 30 some dollar stop, but it wasn't a teeny weeny, so, you know, you have to know what your actual monetary risk is. And you're going to have to change your sizing based on that. The only difference between a beginner trader, an intermediate trader, and an advanced trader is size. A trader cannot risk more money per trade and take size until they know how to accurately trade over a period of months. However, trading with size is the goal. One play with size can make your whole week. Like, like the S. If you did the advanced trade in that, did the ad, if it didn't work, you wouldn't have made anything. But if it didn't work, you would have lost. And if it worked and you did it, you made over $4,000 and you, that, that, that's your week. Two or three great plays a month can actually make your whole month. And this is the positive thing about gaps when you get things that move a lot. And right now is prime time because it is earnings season. Going back to the philosophy that I was talking to you about earlier about trading stocks, earnings season is the time when people are watching the stocks that they love or the stocks that they hate or the stocks that they're in. They have a personal investment in them. They have love for them or hate for them. They have heart for them. It's earnings season. They want to know, what did they do last quarter? Was it, did they have a good quarter? Did they have a bad quarter? What are they doing? It's prime, prime time now to trade for that reason because the stocks are moving. There's volatility. And volatility means you can get paid if you take the right position in the right direction. Now, what do I mean here by trading with size? It's just really not that different. 500 shares of stock, it was a dollar. It's 500 bucks if it drops a buck. 5,000 shares, if you have 5,000 shares, it was a dollar. You make 5,000. And obviously, if you have a huge size of something that moves a lot, you would never have 50,000 shares of something. But it's the point that a dollar is a dollar. We have 500 shares of 5,000. And so the reality is that your goal is to really be at the point where you're taking size. You can get the move and stuff. Whether you piecemeal out of this or not also is up to you. 
you are looking for stocks to have profitability and move. And you often get things that have a dollar move. You often get things that have more than a dollar move. Okay. And that's why I like trading that range between 20 and, like I said, 40, 45 ish. Do you pre screen or identify the three to five gap stocks for the coming week? Um, what I do do. Mr. Pengar is on the day before the actual end of the day in the trading room. I will look at what's out at the night. That's all that I do. So that the pre, only pre-screen that I would do is for the night before. I don't do it that far ahead. No, I don't do that that far ahead. You don't. You don't need to do that. I'm just worried about what I'm doing on the one day. Trading with size, though, is the way to make even more money. Okay, it's the way to make even more money. You you want to be able to make more money eventually over time. Again, your long range goal in a year from now, five years from now, where do you see yourself? What do you want to do? Now, if you break it down for pay rate per hour training gaps, if you calculate your rate per hour on working for the money in, for example, Sprint, the beginner pay rate, this person made two hundred forty dollars in thirty minutes. That equates to basically 480 an hour. That's a great pay rate. And this is for the beginner. For an intermediate trader, he made $1,200 in 30 minutes. That equates to 2400 an hour. For the advanced pay rate, the person, I'm not talking about the trade with the app. I'm talking about the trade that made 2400 in 30 minutes. That equates to $4,800 an hour. This is superb. Now, again, it's the, just the idea here. Because you're not going to make you know five hundred dollars every hour of every day or forty eight hundred every hour. You're not working for eight hours. But the point is, the amount of time that you are spending is worth it. Okay, you're getting paid a very high rate per hour of your time. You're getting you're getting paid at the cream of the crop, top top of the line. Is if you had a job where you, for example, if you were a physician or if you even ran a hedge fund or something like that. Okay. You are at the top of your game when you are doing this to be able to make this kind of money in 30 minutes, 45 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, less than an hour. Anything like that, you're at the top of your game. Okay? So trading with size successfully requires a plan. Again, I use a 26-point checklist. I don't pre-screen anything ahead of time. I look for stuff that's happening that night in the room. Could you pre-screen things out way in advance of a week or something if you want to do that? Sure. Maybe that's your trading plan. Maybe you do that. Maybe you're really, really that organized and prepared for the week that you do like every Saturday morning. You sit down and you look at stuff for the Monday through Friday of the next week. Sure, you could do that. But I will tell you that even if you do that, you will get stuff that happens and pops up that you don't plan. And you still want to look at it. You still want to rate them. You still don't want to miss those good ones that happen unexpectedly. Now, what if your goal is to do this to make a living to make, for example, you know, and I'm putting this out there, $100,000 a year, on average, to make $100,000 per year as an annual income trading gaps, a normal risk unit of $250 per trade is suggested. Once a trader is experienced with the system and good at holding the targets, even using a $200 risk unit to achieve this goal. This is a conservative figure because if you do well, particularly in earnings season where you get a lot of things to do, you can do more than one gap at a time. So like, let's just say if you get up in the morning and you have two gaps, they both rate 22 points, They're really, really good gaps. Actually, there was a bunch of days last week this was the case. You get really, really quality gaps. You can do them both, okay? They might not set up at the exact same time. And even if they do, you take one, you take the other, you watch them both, you do them. Okay, get the stops in, take them, watch them, boom. It's a lot to go on, but if you could take two trades and make this kind of money in two things, you do it, okay? You really have to take advantage of the good gaps when you get them. And some days you get two or three, they're all in a row, and you just try to do as many of them as you can, basically. Okay. And a lot of times they don't always set up the exact same time as the other one. So like you might get one that sets up in the first five minutes, and the other one sets up like in the first 15 minutes, and then you're out of the first one, and then you go to the second one, and you still have the second one. Okay. So, uh, for example, we were talking before about your goals. Know your goals. Why are you doing this? What is your goal? How much money do you want to make? $500 a day is $2,500 a week. That gets you to your goal of making hundred grand a year if you want to do this for a career. If you want to make $300 a day, that's a reasonable goal. That still is $78,000 a year. At $300 a day, people complain. They say, oh, I'm, I want to make $500 a day, $500 a day. 
just set your goal at $300 a day. $300 a day, if you can do that every day, is $78,000 a year. And there will be days where you might take a loss, but then there will be days you make more than $300. Because you get a drop and a move and something that goes right to the target, like Sprint. So it'll average out to be that. This is an average. $150 a day is so, so reasonable. I cannot even tell you. That's $750 a week. That's $39,000 a year. Again, it still equates to an hourly rate that far exceeds what most jobs are. And if you are losing now as a trader, the idea of making $39,000 a year trading and working 30 minutes a day really should not sound that bad. You have to get to the point where you're profitable. You have to make $39,000 a year before you can make 78. dollars You have to make 78 dollars before you can make one thirty. dollars this is how it goes. That's why you have to have a plan of action. That's why you have to be committed to learning it, to understanding, having the comprehension. I talk about this all the time. It's the comprehension. What am I supposed to do with this thing? Am I supposed to buy this? Am I supposed to short this? Is this a good one? Is the market coming in? Is the market rallying? I don't know what to do. You have to know what to do. The rating system, the checklist, tells you what to do. Now, I was talking earlier about working for yourself. I firmly believe that this world is just not the same as 25 years ago or 10 years ago, even five years ago before the bank bailout. It's more than that now, actually, 2008. It's six years now since the bank bailout, almost seven we're going. What we think is a secure job today may be gone tomorrow. And we can be great employees, productive about going hard working. It may not even matter to our employer in the end if the company can't keep you on. If a company has poor management, they might fail, and it has nothing to do with you. Or your industry might fail, and it has nothing to do with you. You are a skilled person with a great mind, and you can work for yourself in the market if you set your mind to it. I firmly believe if you set your mind to doing this, you can do it. Sheer willpower to set you in the right direction to meet up with someone like me, for example, that will teach you how to trade right. You can create your own job security. And you can create your own opportunity by taking it upon yourself to learn how to trade the market, and not only that, make money trading. When you trade, you have no boss. You work for yourself. It's a good thing, okay? It's a great thing. You work for yourself. <laughs> you know, once you start to work for yourself, you'll probably never want to go back to work for anyone else again. It's, you know, you get used to it. What can I say? Okay, I'll never work for anyone else again. It's, it's hard to go back to that if you would have to. So you want to make it. Because the idea of going back to work for someone else, if you've been trading and at this, you know, it's, it's hard to swallow then. The idea of working for yourself and being your own boss is actually a terrific thing. And also, when you trade, you work from home, which is a luxury, particularly this time of the year now. It's getting into the cold months. It's winter in New York now. Snow will be here soon. To be, if I had to commute and get on that subway every day, <laughs> I, first of all, I'd have to get up even earlier than I do now to trade. And, you know, it would be a lot of stress. It would be very stressful. It's very stressful to commute. Some people have to commute, not on subways, but they have to commute and they have to drive. And they have to drive in snow. Or they have to drive in the traffic or in the freeways. Like if you work out in L.A., I mean, it is very stressful to commute back and forth to work. It's a luxury if you can work from home. A luxury that I honor and am grateful for. Okay? So you want to be serious about doing this so that you can keep these luxuries. Some of the luxuries are not just about the money. Some of the luxuries are the convenience of working at home, the comfort of working at home. The idea that you don't have to work eight hours a day, the idea that you don't have to work a boss, have a boss, some of the wonderful things about gap trading have nothing to do with the money. And also when you trade, you can set your own schedule. Time off, you want to take a three-day weekend, you don't want to trade on a Monday, you want to take Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Like today is Veterans Day. If you didn't want to trade today or yesterday, you could have taken a four-day weekend. Market was very slow today and very slow yesterday. It'll start picking up tomorrow now with the holiday. Banks were closed today. You could have taken a four-day weekend. Come back just straight Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You can make vacations for yourself. Do whatever you want, okay? Because, again, you're your own boss. This all has to do with the gap. The magic of the gap is what makes it possible to be able to profit. It's the power of the gap. That's what creates the huge opportunity in a very short time frame to trade these stocks. So the idea for you to be successful if you want to do this, and if you want to do this, you want to be successful, is to learn the right knowledge to make money trading. And, you know, the last thing I want to say is that know that you can do it. You can empower yourself to trade the market. I've done it for myself. The class I teach is called the Golden Gap Course. It's a complete system to use to trade. It's all the pieces of the puzzle together. I teach the reading system. That's the whole day of Saturday of the class. Charts, the whole shebang. It's whole one day. And then I teach the entries and the exits, port of resistance, targets, 
That's the second day of the class. The class is called the Golden Gap Course. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. And I talked about the longs. <clears throat> you can flip the points to go long if you want to do the bullish gaps. Retakes are free, and the class is online. The class is not this weekend, but next weekend. So it's November 22nd and 23rd. From 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, the cost of the class is $29.99. I allow free retakes. What does that mean? Like, let's just say you take the class in November, you train. You want to come back in January and retake it. Refresher, after the holidays, you can do it free of charge. Once you sign up and register for the class, you can retake it as many times as you want to for free. I feel that that's valuable for people. I think it helps them get better, okay? If you're interested, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com. You want to get on the path of success. And the Golden Gap course teaches you to get on the right direction because it's so specific. Now, I am doing it. Look at that essential part. Isn't it gorgeous? Uh, I'm doing a fall class deal. If you sign up for the Golden Gap course by this Friday, remember the class is next weekend, by Friday the 14th, if you want to do an early bird combo special, this would be basically a bunch of classes you'd get. You do the Golden Gap class, the Trends class, the Wealth Manifestation class. I'm giving November, December free in the room. I'm doing all of that for $34.99 if you sign up by Friday. The savings is $15.96, like if you paid for everything separately. Okay. You must take the Golden Gap course to be a live trader in the live room. You cannot sign up for the trading room separately. Why? Because this is aggressive. I want you to do well. I don't think anyone should trade gaps or follow or take my trades if they don't know what they're doing. That's for your benefit. And I feel that people need to be serious about their trading. And if someone spends $2,900 or serious about their trading, they're committed to doing it. But this is the biggest special I've ever had with the hugest savings here. And it gives you a lot of information. The deadline is November 14th for the early bird. You can sign up for just the Golden Gap class next week if you want as well for the $29.99. And this Wealth Manifestation course, I just want to talk briefly about this. I'm doing this in December. If you get the combo, you get this for free. This is a class where I don't talk anything about charts. It is a class really that has to do with your mind and how your mind works in relationship to money. One of the things that I think that people struggle with sometimes when they trade to be profitable is they ha they, they're, they've they they been through the ringer sometimes before people come to me. And so they might have spent a lot of money in the market, spent a lot of money in classes, then they find me, and now they say, I still believe in the market, I still have conviction, but my head is so screwed up because of the money I lost in other stuff. You've got to get your mind back on track. This class really helps people with that. It's a training psychology course, really, that doesn't talk at all about charts but it's something that is very important to create wealth and success in your trading and your life. So love your life. Love yourself and love what you're doing for a living. I absolutely love trading. I absolutely love the market. I love my life. I love myself and I love teaching people. And if you want to learn more, you can just reach out to me and email me. And here's my information. Now, does anyone have any questions at all? Anyone have any questions about anything that they didn't ask so far? We did have a bunch of good questions here today. I know we went a little bit over, but we had some questions, and I never plan what I'm going to say anyways. I guess I went off on a tangent there about the market. But does anyone have any specific questions as well about the market? Or about anything I talked about today? Or about gaps, or day trading, or leverage, or anything that they want to ask me? Or any charts you want me to bring up and look at? I'm here now. Uh, it's called the Stock Swish. Just put in a YouTube Stock Swish, and I'll just pop right up. And I will do a market video. If I, if I don't do it tonight, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow about the market. But the market's definitely higher. I don't know if anyone has any specific questions about that or not. And if you like a trial of the trading room, just email me. You can sit in on the room, you know, the rest of the week. You can email me tonight. I allow people in the room for trials before they sign up for the class. It's good for people to see how the gaps work, to get a feel for it, to see if it's something they're interested in, if it's something that they want to do. Okay. All right, great. Thanks for coming, everyone. Good group in here today. Good, solid questions. Went over a little bit, but I think that was fine. Actually, most everybody stayed except for a few people had to go at 530. Have a wonderful evening.
Have a good night. Oh, you just started 4X Futures. Will this confuse you? I don't think anything confuses you if you separate it out, if it's different. This is nothing to do with Forex Futures. This is so different from Forex Futures, it's not even funny. <laughs> so I don't think this will confuse you, Mr. Pendergar. I don't think you're going to wake up in the middle of the night and confuse the gap with that. If you were doing some stock strategy that was very similar to this, maybe, but actually I can't even think of any... I can't even think of any that is similar to this. Gaps are so specific. But that's completely different. That's like really, really different. I think this is easy because of the fact that I'm so focused on the rating system. The rating system makes it easy. The rating system makes it easy. I just go through the checklist every day and they go. If it rates 20 points or more, I do it. If it doesn't, I don't. It's, it's that simple for me. If you are looking to do something consistently, you have to have something broken down where you simplify it. Mr. Pendergar said it appears to be easy. The, you have to find a way to break it down, okay? If you don't find a way to stay so focused on what you're doing, what ends up happening is you get all sucked into the whole thing about making money and you get all nervous and stressed out, and you're watching a million things, and guess what? You don't get anything right. Nothing works. You miss everything that you think, even that you like something, you didn't do it, and you miss it. You have to be so focused. That's the only way you get it right. So you must make it as simplified as yourself with what you're supposed to watch so that you're able to get it, okay? the You have to put it into a process or a format, and like I said, my class is basically a trading plan. The money manager, though, is up to you. You have to decide how much you're risking. I'm not, I'm not deciding that for you, but I break it down in three categories, beginner, intermediate, advanced. But I, for me, myself, I did this and made this for a way to break it down to make it easier for myself because there's so many stocks that are in the stock market every day. I didn't know what to watch any day. And not every gap works. In fact, most gaps don't work. The one day last week I counted, there were 18 gaps I looked at. I had a watch list. 18 I picked the best two. Would you believe it? I picked the best two, my two top two washes. Of course, you would believe it. The people here that know me, they both worked. They were the best ones. You, you really, it's not every gap works. So you have to have a way to hone it down. You can't trade 18 things. And if you did, they didn't work, you lose. You only need one good trade to make money, actually, every day. There's only about five trades per week, whereas four times is, four X is a lot more trades per week. Well, you know, I don't like doing a lot. I don't think more is better in the case of trading. I mean, you tell me what you prefer. For my personality, I'd rather have one nice trade and be done. I'd rather have two nice trades and be done. The more trades, the more commissions, the more you're at risk. I, I think it's less is more. Less is more for more profit. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. Less is more. The less trades you take, the better quality, the more focused you'll be, the less risk you are. And the more money you're going to make and the less commission costs you have. Um, I'm just looking at the overall trend of things as far as I'm looking to say whether something is a long or a short. If you're talking about the shout out letter. And I'm giving targets, for example. So the, the longer term letter is something where you know, you when you're when you're taking over nights, it's not that specific. It can't possibly be unless you're trading live with me, RT. So, for example, <clears throat> if I'm doing a a letter and I'm saying the targets, okay, that means you can take a position in that long or short if you want to go long or short something, and you're looking for this target. You're gonna have to determine your money management of the size of the position based on the stock where you're able to get it because the fact is it's not a millisecond minute type of thing that you're going to be able to get and it should never be looked at that way for longer term trades anyways. Do you know what I'm saying? If the entry's there, it's there. You're going to get it when you get it and size yourself based on when you would get the letter, which I try to get out as quickly as I can see something. But, you know, I can't like drop everything and send a letter. And that wouldn't make sense anyways. It's it, These aren't day trades. These are not day trades. 
these are ones you want to get. You want to get them within the reasonable time frame, depending if you're looking for a swing or a longer term. But it's not about like for like the sprint where you're doing a 10 cent stop or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, you can call me and talk about that if you want or email me, Mr. Pengar, about the, if you want to talk about that. I, I don't know how heavily committed you are to that. I don't know how much you love it. I mean, again, it's the conviction. I have so much conviction and gaps. When I decided to do this, I had no idea how good these things were. I've been doing this for six years, and I, every year I have more conviction, more conviction, more conviction. I'm seeing the follow-through on them. I'm seeing the way I'm reading the market. I'm seeing the way I'm predicting the market the way no one else is doing. I have so much conviction in what I do. I can't even tell you. This is the reason that I'm still teaching this stuff because I'm so passionate about it, and I love to trade. I have a lot of conviction in the strategy that I train. And I teach it well as a result of that. But you have to have conviction in whatever you do. I don't care if you do for futures, forex, options, whatever. You have to have conviction in the manner that you're trading, the strategy that you're taking. You will never get around the fact that you are taking risk. You, you just won't. The only way to kind of counterbalance that risk factor of your own money, because it is your money, it's your cash, and your and I don't care if you say, well, I can go and I can do it with someone else's and use their money. It doesn't make any difference. You're not going to get paid by those people and you're going to waste your time if you lose their money too. You have to have the conviction. The more conviction, the less stressed. That's why I'm such a firm believer in this conviction. If I have 100% conviction that I don't feel the weight of the stress of the risk that I'm taking, and it allows me to do it, and it allows me to do the one-minute chart, it allows me to take an advanced risk, and it allows me to take the train, and that's it. I take it, and I have the conviction. And if you don't have conviction in what you're doing, it's really, really hard to take risk because there's no way of getting around that. And there never will be. And if you don't take risk, you're not going to make any money. So you have to take the risk or you won't profit. It's like you can't have one without the other. The webinars, what webinars do you mean, RT? You're here. You're here at the webinar. You can attend. The webinars, I invite people. I don't know what you mean by webinars. Uh, thank you for the invite. You have built a business strategy around using the Forex as a debt service vehicle for various business projects. You'd love to talk to me and get your input. Yeah, you can call me. Here's my number. I don't know where you are. This is my phone number if anybody wants to call me. I'm in Eastern Time Zone. And here's my email again. Okay. Good job. Great questions. Email me if you want info more, more information. Email me if you're interested in the combo special. It's a great savings. You could trade then with me the rest of the year, learn the gap class. You'd be all set to go. Know everything you need to go into 2015, which I think is going to be an extremely bullish year, but good still for the shorts. I'll say this one last thing. I'll let everybody go. If you are good at spotting weakness in a bullish market, you have huge potential to profit. Because people are going to dump stocks that are not performing when the market runs and things aren't following through correctly. You need to know what that looks like to be able to profit from it. Not everything will be shortable that gaps down. But if you can spot it, it can have huge potential for a big run to the downside. These people will dump stocks that are non-performers in a very bullish market. We're still in a bullish market, but I'm telling you, my prediction is that the way I'm reading it, it gets even more so. I don't know what you mean by the webinars. Oh, you lost me, RT webinars. I don't do any other webinars besides the ones I, I actually invite people to. Occasionally, I might do a lecture, you know, this is so new here now, this letter. I might do something where I would talk about something where I would do a lecture, I'd talk about it, but if I did, everyone that was on the subscription would come to it. Right now, I'm not doing any other webinars that nobody, everyone that is on my list gets invited to the webinars. There's no webinars that are uh, not, people aren't getting invited to. I don't know what you mean. I, I might do something where I talk about something as this goes on and progresses, but if people were on the list for that, they would get invited. I have, there's nothing that I'm doing right now with that because it's just started. I don't know what you mean. If you mean the trading room, are you talking about the trading room? People that subscribe to the trading letter, the trading letter is something different from the trading room. I don't know if that's what you mean. 
There's no webinars that you don't get invited to if you're on my list or you wouldn't have known to come to this. The online class is a paid class that anyone can pay and sign up for if they want to learn. And after you take the class, you're eligible to sign up for the live training room, which you can be in and see every day because I do the ratings and I put the numbers in the room every single day. Now, there are some people that come to the room, do their own ratings, do their own numbers, verify them with me, and take the trades. Then there's some people that roll out of bed, roll into the room at 9.15, and then just look at my numbers and do it. So, you know, even though they did the class. So it depends where you are on the planet, you know, the time zone that you're in. Some people come into the room, it's very, very late for them. They're far, far on the opposite side of the planet. Some people are, it's very, very early. They're on the other opposite side of the planet. One gentleman in Hawaii, he's really far. Then I have someone else that's in China, very far as well. So, you know, you do what you can do depending on where you're at in the planet. The room is a support system for you to get along quicker, faster, to make a faster progression. But there's no webinars that you're not invited to, RT. You're on the list. There's no secret webinars, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Lewis is asking, is there additional charge for the room? Yes, the room is $250 a month, even after you take the class. That's why I have this special here. That's why the special is good, because the room for November and December is worth 500 bucks, and I'm giving that away for free with this early bird. I'm giving it away for free with the early bird. So, yes. If you're following my calls and taking my trains, the room pays for itself above and beyond, which is why I have people paying for me in the room. So there's people that took the class, paid for the class, that are in the room and paying to be in the room. Why? Because the trades that I'm calling are good. So, you know, and you're learning from me. So I do teaching in the class uh, or the room as well as call the, the gap ratings and the entries and the targets for everything. But yes, there is a cost above for that. But I'm doing a special right now if you sign up by Friday. There's also, I actually have the annual subscription. The annual subscription saves 25%. That's a huge savings too if you do the annual subscription for the year. Still have to do the class to do that, but that saves 25%. And again, if you're committed to trading, you'll sign up for the run for the year. You'll, you'll sign up for the run for a year if you're committed to the trading. I have a good amount of people that have done that. They want to learn from me. They want to be from me. They want to understand gaps. I think over time, you get better and better and better. If you're doing something uh, that works, you will get better over time. And as you get better over time, you'll make more money over time. You have to have a plan of action for what you want to do. You want to be profitable. You want to do something that works. It has to fit your personality, your lifestyle, okay? This fits my personality. It happens really quickly. That fits my personality. I don't have a lot of patience. It fits my lifestyle because I'm an early morning person. I get up early in the morning. I'm done early in the morning. I have the rest of the day to myself. So, and I also don't like to work for anyone else. I'd like to be my own boss. So that fits my personality too. You have to know yourself. Like, what do you like to do and stuff? And, and, I, and I like trading for many, many reasons, but it's not just the money that you can make, okay? And as I pointed out, there's different levels that you could be on with this. You could go so many different places with this. And actually, if you learn how to trade well, and say you don't like working from home, say you're bored, you feel lonely, you like to be around people, you like to work in an office, like let's just say that's you. You learn how to trade, you could go work for a trading desk. Someone could hire you. You could go work for a fund. You could go do something else with this. Do you have any idea how many people have no clue how to do this stuff? I mean, you get good at trading. You can write your own ticket. You can do a lot of different things. So you just got to focus on getting good. And you could end up going and working for someone. Someone could hire you to do something substantial and pay you a salary if you know how to trade well. Or something that has a salary with a bonus kind of thing if you make good calls and can see what things are doing. You could become a stockbroker. That's something else actually I could do. I mean, there's just so many things you can do with the market. Everyone wants to make money in the market. There's no one that doesn't want to make money in the market. <laughs> there's no one that's not interested in this. Rich people, poor people, everyone, you know, everyone loves the market. So you're a commodity. That's the best way I could describe it. You, you yourself could make yourself a commodity. If you actually learn how to trade well, 
because there's not a lot of people in the planet that know how to trade well, and there never will be that more that know how to trade well than not. Okay, there will there will always be that it will always be that there's more people that lose and less people that win. There will always be the case. Okay, so keep that in mind. You want to be the people that win. All right. Have a good night. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks for staying. Good group here tonight. Email me at melissathestockswish.com or you can give me a call. I wrote my number in the room. Have a great evening. You're welcome. You're welcome, Philip. I hope I answer your questions, RT. If not, email me and I will talk to you later. Have a good night.